The Japanese yen has lost about 15% of its value in the last few months, mainly because of the elections, both leading up to and in the aftermath, where their policy is to try to create inflation, deliberately create inflation, weaken the yen, and, and, and try to cause uh, more spending in Japan, as if that's the solution to their problems. It's not. It's going to create an even bigger problem for Japan. But, of course, it's going to create a problem for us. Because if the Japanese government is successful at pricking the bubble in the Japanese government bond market, because you've got all sorts of uh, uh, savings in Japan in very low-yielding uh, Japanese government bonds, if the Japanese want to get rid of their bonds now because they, they believe that inflation is coming, and with a 15% drop in the yen, gas prices, food prices are really going to shoot up in Japan. And if the Japanese are going to be spending money and not saving as much money, if they're going to be buying stocks or sending their money abroad to escape a weakening yen, the Japanese central bank is going to have to buy more of these Japanese government bonds. Uh, and if they do that, well, they're going to have to buy fewer U.S. Treasuries. They might even have to sell some Treasuries. I don't think they could buy the JGBs and the U.S. Treasuries. They would have to print way too many yen. And especially since their deflation problem, which was never a problem, deflation is a benefit. The ja and they never really had falling prices. Japan had stable prices thanks to a strong yen. But now that they no longer have a strong yen, they're going to get rising prices. And they can't, they can't make them rise too fast. So I think if the, Japan, if the central bank of Japan has to choose between monetizing Japanese government debt and monetizing U.S. government debt, well, they'll, they'll go for their own debt. And that means, uh, you know, we're going to have a bigger problem because if the Japanese aren't buying. That means the Fed has to, you know, print even more money. You know, the Fed minutes just came out uh, yesterday, and there was some discussion about maybe – not continuing to do $85 billion a month in QE, uh, maybe stopping it before the end of the year, that caused the dollar to rally, gold to sell off. I think that's a mistake to, to jump to that conclusion because um, they, just, they might be talking about um, raising rates, but, I mean, they might be talking about ending the QE, but that's just talk. They can't do it, uh, especially since we averted the fiscal cliff. We've got even bigger budget deficits now, and if the Japanese isn't going to, aren't going to fund it, I think the Federal Reserve is going to actually have to increase the size of the QE, not end it early. So the Fed putting this out that they could be stopping a QE, I mean, wouldn't the whole market just immediately, boom, crash just like that? Yeah, they're, they're not going to stop. In fact, they're going to actually increase the size of these bond purchases not only because the Japanese might buy fewer bonds, but because the, be the deficits are going to be bigger. We just canceled all the tax hikes, except for just a small fraction of Americans. But the majority of the tax increases were canceled. The spending cuts were canceled. And so the deficits now are going to be much bigger than what they were forecast to be, which means the Fed is going to have to buy even more bonds if it wants to stop interest rates from sur surging. And, of course, that's what the Fed wants to do. The Fed is trying to prop up the economy, prop up the housing market. And if mortgage rates starts to go up, that's going to clobber the housing market. So the Fed is going to have to buy. I mean, anybody who thinks the Fed is going to voluntarily